ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Jason Mons. <laughs> Coach Vass, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I don't know what's a harder, harder gig, uh, being here and moderating this all day or chasing around a, a four-year-old and a one-year-old like I've been doing. So uh, I'm jealous of the guys that have been able to, uh, to be in all these clinics. Uh, there's been so much good sharing and material that's, that's been happening and taking place. I've tried to steal time uh, during nap time or whenever I can late at night. That's the downside about being on the West Coast is most of the stuff is wrapped up by the time I get my uh, in bed. But definitely appreciate you all um, tuning in for this presentation. I'm going to talk about our Y cross concept and uh, and some of the ways that we dress it up, how we teach it, how we progress it, um, and and show a little bit of uh, some variations off of it. So um, I'm going to jump right into it. If you do have any questions, uh, shoot me an email, jmons, uh, M-O-H-N-S at S-U-S-E.org. Um, I'm on Twitter at, uh, at, at Coach Mons. And uh, I've been, I know, I know quite a few of you guys, uh, I've been, I've been uploading a lot of my clinic stuff, putting video narration on, on my coach two page. Um, so make sure you guys, uh, you guys hit me up, follow me, ask questions. I've been talking ball with coaches from all across the country the last couple of weeks, been really cool um, networking and building relationships. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, briefly about the program, uh, we're a 4A enrollment here in Arizona, uh, about 1300 kids. Uh, had won six consecutive state championships uh, in Arizona. Prior to this last year, we fell a touchdown short uh, in the first ever open division state championship, uh, which was the first time Arizona had combined uh, 4A, 5A, and 6A. They took the top eight teams from the three largest divisions and put a, one super conference tournament together. So uh, made it all the way to the, to the, the championship game, uh, and uh, we came up uh, seven points short, lost to uh, Chandler High, really, really good football team. It was the first time ever in Arizona that two nationally ranked top 25 teams played for the state. So nothing to hang our heads about. We've had a, we've had a heck of a run going. Uh, we don't plan on stopping, uh, trying to continue to learn and get better and, and grow. So uh, we want to jump right into this thing. Uh, I'm going to dive right into our base uh, way we install our Y cross. So we call this, uh, we call this Y Corona. Uh, and I laugh because we name all of our, uh, all of our, our drop back pass concepts, uh, concepts after cities. And so uh, Y cross is Corona for us. Uh, and Corona is actually a city in California. Um, if you've ever heard of Corona Centennial, they're a really good uh, football program out there. So um, it's obviously funny times now that we have a, a fast concept name, Corona, but uh, that's that's what it is. So anyway, uh, base read. So if we tag, we can we can run our cross to uh, to any of our our receivers, but primarily we're going to run it to our Y. Uh, and so our rules are wherever we tag the cross. In this case, it's to our uh, our inline tight end opposite the crosser. Our number one receiver is going to run what we call a WOR, uh, which is work for outside release. And we have two type of vertical routes. We have a WOR and then we have an MOR. An MOR would be a mandatory outside release. Um, that would be like in our in an out concept or a stick concept where we have to protect that flat throw. In this case, it's not mandatory. We'd like to outside release the corner, uh, but if he's going to play hard uh, outside shade squat on us and we can't beat him outside, we can work inside and then we just want to restack. Uh, back on the top of him and our landmark is the same as four verticals so it'd be the bottom of the numbers uh, our number two receiver in this case opposite the crosser is going to run our flat route which uh, our base way we do it is with a bubble screen uh, and I always talk when I do clinics in person um, I go into depth on why we, we do a back pedal bubble you'll see on film our number two is going to he's going to jab his outside foot he's going to drop out and he's going to back pedal and that's the way we throw our bubble screens uh, we switched to that probably four years ago and uh, the reason why we switched to doing it that way uh, was because we had found through doing self-scout and evaluation that doing our uh, open crossover bubble um, was not a very high percentage throw for us. We were, we were really inconsistent on that. And we were inconsistent because none of our guys ever ran it the same way twice in a row. And so the throw was different for the quarterback every time. And what we found was when we did the backpedal bubble, um, it really gave us a consistent landmark. We dropped out, we backpedaled, kept the shoulders, uh, perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. Uh, it would be much the same as if we ran that fast screen to the number one, he foot fired, came back and, and kind of squared his shoulders up back towards the quarterback. It ends up being a very similar landmark throw for our quarterback. So um, after doing it for, for a couple seasons and really getting some good data, uh, we found that our percentage, completion percentage was way up on that throw. Uh, and I was terrified that we'd, we'd get blown up, that the corner would squat it and, and have a kill shot in our back. And I can tell you um, in, in four or five seasons of doing that, that has not happened. So uh, we backpedal, uh, that's our route from our number two. Our crosser, we, it's, it's very similar to kind of like an over route, under Sam, over Mike. We really want our crosser to climb. Once he, once he goes under Sam, we want him to push vertical. We really want him to push vertical to about eight to 10 yards. We tell him 10, cause it's gonna, he's gonna break it off at eight. 
and we want him to flatten that thing out. We really want to try to cross the opposite hash at about 12. And if we run to the opposite sideline, it'd be at about 15 yards, okay? Our number one receiver to the same side as the crosser is going to uh, run that deep wind post, all right? We're aiming for the near hat or for the near goal post, excuse me. And, uh, and we're going to change this stem up. So in this case, we're showing kind of like our circus route where we're stemming in. We want to kind of nod back outside and work back to the post. All right, we can run that with an outside release. If we're tightened down, we can kind of run a spray release. We really want to attack the outside shoulder of the corner, try to get him to open up outside before we win to the near post. All right, most of the time we're going to run this off of a play action look. We call this fire or flame. Uh, it's a outside zone mesh and uh, our, our running back is going to fake across the quarterback's face. Uh, it's a five man protection. So uh, fire would be a 50 protection. So that would turn into a swing to the right. Flame would be the opposite way. Uh, and so what we tell our running back, if the ball's in the middle of the field, he's going to execute that outside zone, kind of really flat mesh. As soon as he crosses the quarterback's face, if the ball's in the middle of the field, we want him to go one, two, three, four hard steps before his eyes turn uh, and he turns up field. If we were running it from the boundary to the field, it would be five steps. If we were running it from the boundary into the boundary, it would be three steps after he crosses the quarterback's face, after he clears, before he turns his eyes around. All right, and this is a very easy, this is, this is one of our true, we call it pure progression. It's a, it's a left to right progression. Uh, and, and we start over here opposite the cross. We say that our WOR is the one A, okay? And then we say that our flat route, whatever our flat route is, in this case, the base way we install it is with the bubble screen. We say that's one B and people go, well, why don't you just say one, two? And I say one A and one B for this reason. I don't want my quarterback to stay on one A all that long we're going to kind of pre-snap peek at that all right if we get squat corner and we can bang a whole shot or we get one-on-one -on -one press with a post safety and there's no help over the top then we're going to take that shot but i'm not going to hang on it very long i want to get off of that if i don't like it if i don't see something early pre-snap that makes me love it i want to come off of it okay um, now in our offense we for a couple seasons just like everybody else we kept our x on the left and our z on the right so we could play fast and what we found out is that uh, we weren't able to isolate our best receiver, who's our X, as much as we wanted to. So we flip-flop our X and Z in our base tempo. Um, and so we can always isolate that X. X is always going to be opposite our Y. And so that's a matchup for them. We're, we really want them to play two over one. We want them to have to play over the top of that guy with the safety. Okay? But we're going to peak at 1A on that WOR. We're going to come off that real quick to 1B. And really all we want to do is make sure we can pull this curl flat defender out. Really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get them to defend three over two on this two-man route right here. Okay, We want them to play three over two. If we can get them to play three over two, then our second read on this route, after we go 1A, 1B, we're coming to the cross. Okay. And this is just naturally, whether it's a post safety or a split safety look, okay, if it's, if it's post safety, then if we can pull that curl flat player out, as soon as we clear the mic, we should have a nice hole right here. If it's a split safety look, like this one that's drawn up, if we can make this guy open up over the top of one, now we're looking to throw the cross into the first window or second window, all right, hopefully it's a first window throw because we widen that first window, all right, unless that backside safety squeezes it and drives it. If he squeezes it and drives it, now we're looking to take the top off with our win post on the backside of that cross. Now, a lot of teams, when they run Y cross, they run this as a post curl, and that's a tag we can put on it, especially against soft cover three teams. We can tag that post curl backside, but we love to run this as the win post backside. And then the, the fourth read, or what we would call our danger read, is that back on the swing um, after that, that play action fake. And what you guys will see is a lot of times, uh, the defense is going to fall way off. They're going to carry stuff. Linebackers are going to try to reroute and get depth. And this swing comes wide open. And I really wish we would take it more in our offense. We, we don't get enough. When we do, we usually get explosive plays out of it. So that's our base read, 1A on the WOR, uh, 1B on the, on the flat route, whether it's the bubble or an out or a sail or whatever it is. And I'll show you some of those variations. Uh, third read, or excuse me, second primary read is on the cross Third is on that backside post, and then fourth is the swing to the back. That's also our danger throw, which is if it gets if it gets hairy, they get pressure, we miss a block or something, somebody comes free, we're going to check to that real quick. That's our hockey. 
So first one right here, uh, this is uh, down in the red zone. We've got the Y cross, our, our inline tight ends running the, the cross. Our quarterback's going to look out pre-snap at our X receiver. So he's looking out here right now. He gets press man. They're down in tight. There's no safety help over the top. This is a really easy decision. This is a backup quarterback, so it's not a great throw. Uh, but he knows he's going one-on-one -on -one to his X right now. He's not looking at anything else. We're going to go our guy on their guy. We like that matchup. Put the ball up in the air. Let him go make a play on the ball. Okay. So there's no progression right here. That's the first read. We're going to take a look at throwing that. We have one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to put it in the air. Okay. Now we're coming down. We're going to start looking at some more um, opportunities where we're going to throw the cross. So uh, we're running from the top of the field. We're running our Y cross right here. We've got bubble screen down into the boundary. We're working the WOR right here. Really all we want to do, if we can pull this overhang back around and get them to play three over two, then we've got a lot of uh, grass to throw across. That post them back. Okay, that's what we're looking for right here. So we're going flame protection. And now what I will tell you is if we get pressure, and we do a decent job of fanning this, if we get pressure across the back space and he can't run that swing, what I'd like to have him do right here is stick his foot. We want to convert this to an arrow route. And he doesn't do a very good job of that here because he's still looking over his inside shoulder. But if I get pressure across my face, I'm going to get inside, and I, now I'm going to aim to three yards to the sideline and get my eyes over my outside shoulder. So we want to convert that flame to an arrow. And I, I just don't like looking over my inside shoulder from being pushed up the field like that. It's just not a, a, a easy throw or easy catch. Okay. So we get the three over two into the boundary. The safety's playing really wide. All right. I do not like this route. And you guys will see. I mean, sometimes you get, you get they're good clips because they're bad routes. This guy, he just bleeds this across. He's way too flat. He doesn't get depth. I want to see him stem. We, we want to go under the sand, but the sand's blitzing. We want to vertically, we want to stem the, the mic and then we want to press it vertical. I've got to show vertical stem to the safety to get myself some cushion. Because if I just bleed this across, he's going to be able to drive that. And, and now I'm forcing myself to have to throw that backside post. So I'd like to see him get more of a vertical stem on this one, but we still get good flow. Outside linebackers triggering this. We get two over one on the vertical, like most quarters teams will do. If two goes flat, then the safety's going to play over the top of one. And now we've got a nice window to throw the cross. And not a very good crosser but we still have a nice window to throw it into. Coach, okay. I want to jump in real quick here. Sorry to yes, interrupt. Sir. Would you mind trying to go do the, the slow route? Because the film's pretty choppy right now. Film's choppy. Okay, I'll go slow. Yeah, up. it's just all day. Like, the whole world's running on this Zoom platform. So gotcha. But if we could just give that a try and see if that works better. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll slow play through. Okay, so this Thanks. next clip right here, we're running the same thing. We're running the Y cross from the field, from the top of the screen. Bottom of the screen, here's another good coaching point, all right? We told this guy, it's not a mandatory outside release. This is a, this is a work for outside release. So if you start working for outside release, and, uh, and I'm going through, if you start working for outside release and you can't get it, then you got to work back inside. Because what happens here is he gets rerouted out, out of bounds, all right? And as soon as he gets rerouted out of bounds, now he's dead. And so now this backside safety, instead of having to respect and play over the top of one, he can come back down and hunt the cross. And you can see that's what happens here. So um, that's why we tell our guys it's not mandatory that we outside release. So this is the, this right here, our X kills our Y uh, because he tries to outside release. He gets rerouted out of bounds. He gets canceled. Okay. We get everything we want. The cross is wide open. This is a much better job. If you guys watch from the top of the screen, it's a much better job by our Y of vertical stem. Once he insides release, vertical stem before he flattens it out. He's aiming for 12 yards, but we don't protect him because our X gets canceled and then he quits on the route. Okay, good job hanging on, good play by the safety, but that's important coaching point that we make sure we protect him. Okay, Looking again right here, now we're running this from the boundary to the field. In this case, what I'd like to do is I'd like to cut the split of one down a little bit. I'd like to widen the split of two. We've really got to be able to hold these guys and pull these guys out. These guys right here, they just play with a ton of depth, all right, and their safety doesn't chase, he doesn't open over the top of the one. So he just kind of hangs to play the cross. In this case, we, we, we need to throw this out right now or this flat route right now uh, because they're not defending. Now, I'll show you a variation. What I like, if we're gonna run uh, the crosser from the boundary, I like to run that out to the field so that if this guy's gonna try to play at the line of scrimmage and then bounce, he can't get there. If they start hanging this safety, if this safety's not open up over the top of one, if he's trying to just hang, uh, on the seam right here and defend the cross, then we really need to go to our outer, our sail concept. And I'll show you what those look like. This time that safety just hangs. He's able to get back and, uh, and, and make a play on the crosser. Um, this would be one where we'd like to throw that flat route. Sorry, I gotta slow it down. 
Okay, here's another look from the hash. Better split by our X and uh, down on the bottom of the screen. All right, we get the outside backer, the overhang to the field to widen, and he opens up that really nice window. And this is a good job. Watch our Y right here. He's going to stem the sand. The sand blitzes. So now we're going to push vertical, hold that safety, and then flatten it out. We just get that safety to open up. If you guys watch, that safety is just going to open up just a little bit before we flatten it out. All right, we really want to push that thing vertical to closer to 10. All right, but any kind of vertical stem that we can get that safety to, to respect any kind of post or vertical route is going to open up that crosser much more. Okay, same look here, uh, running the cross from the top of the screen. Now we're getting man free. And what we tell our crosser to do, if we get man free, is he's got to break that thing flat. So he's got to, he's kind of got to alert that and he's got to really flatten that crosser out so he can create separation. Coach Bass, is this, is this better going slow? Hopefully. Okay, so if we get man free, we want to make sure that that Y really flattens that out. And we alert that. Now I want you guys to take a look here. Look at the running back after the after the play action, after that flame action. Look at the grass for the running back. So if we don't love this, they're playing man free. All right. Linebacker's kind of stuck in no man's land. That's the that's the fourth progression of the hot throw, and that back's got grass for days. Same thing here, we're running the cross from the bottom of the screen. We've got the bubble to the field. Slow this down. Okay. A little bit more of a man free look again. Almost cover zero. And we really want to push the Y, really want to push that guy vertical a little bit longer, push that safety vertical, and then break that thing real flat. Okay, good job by our quarterback of hanging in and putting that ball on the money on the crosser with traffic in his face. I think this is the last one that I'll show you some variations. So I think this one we're going, we're working the post now. Okay. So now I'm showing, showing you some reads. We're going to cut it off on the post. So now we get the split safety look. All right. And, and, you know, a lot of teams will start doing, they'll play more of a quarters look to the field. And then they'll almost start playing more of a cover zero look to the tight end side, to the close side. So that's kind of what we're getting. That safety starting to hug the Y right now. If that safety starts hugging the Y and triggering, now we're going to try to cut that ball loose over the top on the post. And this is why we start with our base install is on the post uh, because that's what we want to hit as a winner. Now, if they start really falling backside, the corner's falling off, or they're playing a, a soft cover three, then we'll tag that post curl to our uh, number one receiver that's to the same side as the cross. Okay? Cross is coming from the bottom of the screen. Again, the, the safety is kind of cheating. He's opening up inside to the crosser, so we're going to cut the post loose on the top of the screen you can see it's not a great ball but you can see that safety turn inside and start squeezing start hugging the crosser and now that opens up it's one-on-one -on, -one on the top on that post okay same look here post safety we want to we want to look that post safety off we're getting man free they're driving and now we're one-on-one -on, -one on the outside this is a good job if you look at our receiver on the top of the screen he's going to work to the outside shoulder of that corner we want to get that corner to open up outside and then win to that near post back inside. Okay? Really important that we try to get that guy turned. I don't think we needed to use one hand right there, but we did and look, look sexy on TV. Okay, another look we're throwing on the top of the screen. We're throwing that wind post over the top. Actually, yeah, so here's a great look. Now we, we start getting post safety look. We start getting post safety look. We're pulling out the curl flat player. The good play action fake is holding the linebackers. That's why I like the play action on this because it's making those linebackers step up. All right. Now on this one, the safety's playing with depth. He's opening up over the top. We should be throwing the cross. We're, we're, getting, uh, we're getting a little horny here trying to throw that backside post into traffic. We should be throwing the crosser to the Y. So you guys see if that safety's playing with depth like that. We've got a nice window to throw the crosser. Okay, same thing on the top of the screen. Uh, we're running the cross. Now they're really hugging, almost like cover zero to the tight end. Safety's squeezing and driving the crosser. We're going to take the top off over the top. And, and in our offense, you know, our X is probably our, is probably our best guy, ball skills, route running, all that. We really want a Z that can run. We want a guy that can really take the top off the defense. So you got a guy that's a track guy um, that, that can take the top off. That's In our offense, that's where we want him right there. So he's going to run a lot of those backside posts over the top and try to hit some win to him, run some four vertical where he's, he's locked on the bottom of the numbers and he's just trying to win one-on-one. -on -one.
okay? Change that variation. This doesn't have to be Y cross. So in this case, we're running the H cross. So now we're running H corona. Uh, and that just tells our Y, he's got the flat route now. If he's attached, if he's an inline Y, then we're just gonna run a little flat arrow route right now. So um, he was expected in the clip, it's, it's the odd front. They've got the Sam up in his face. He's kind of expecting that Sam to come. So he's gonna do a little kind of push pull technique um, and the Sam kind of falls off. So it looks a little funky. Really all we wanna do is just stretch that thing, get the ball out here to the, to the uh, we call it STD, split the difference between the, the sideline and the bottom of the numbers and just sit. We wanna pull that overhang out and it's the same progression for the quarterback. All right, we're working WOR to the flat route, cross, backside post, and then the, the back is the danger of the four three in the progression, okay? So we're running from the top of the screen, our H is running the cross, our Y is gonna kind of show this little push pull. All right, we don't get a lot of pressure, so he's going flat right now. It's a really lazy ass route from five right here. I really want him to get out here. He should, our arrow route aims to three yards. He should get out here and sit. We've gotta really expand these guys so he doesn't really run a great route. Uh, but you can see the safety's playing with depth. Okay, safety's playing with depth. We get good play action look, get him to step up, and now we just have first window to second window on the H on the crosser. Okay. So it's just a way to change it up. Doesn't have to always be T or Y. We can, we can run it across, you know, opposite our inline tight end. And, and we're an 11 personnel team, so we want to have that Y in an inline attached or wing uh, or up back position quite a bit. That's just the way we try to even out uh, the numbers against a lot of these odd front teams that we're seeing now. Okay. Um, some variations. All right. All we're doing right now, we want to find creative ways to change that high low read, that 1A to 1B. So this right here, we call our lock one. All right, a key one for us would just be fast screen to the one. Our number two would get out here one yard in front. He'd get square and jab and find most dangerous man. So we're just trying to show, we're just locking off of that. We're gonna run that fast screen, come back. All right, we're gonna go flat, jab, show our hands, and now we're going vertical. All right, so now the number two that's running the lock, he's the one A, all right? One B is our receiver that's running that lock key right there. Y is running the cross. Post, everything else is the same. It's the same exact progression. We're just changing the high low that we're giving the quarterback, okay? So you can see right here, we're gonna lock this into the boundary. Lock into the boundary, show your hands, go vertical, safety's getting over the top, cross to backside post, okay? And we get them, we get them flowing. I'd like to see our receiver on the top of the screen attack the outside shoulder of that corner better. He, he kind of just bleeds this thing inside and never makes that corner uh, open up outside, which we want to do, but it's a good throw and it's a good catch. We're getting one on one, and this is the ball we tell our quarterback: this is either a touchdown or you're throwing it out of bounds over the top. You're missing, missing big. All right, we want to. If we want to miss, we want to miss big. Okay, here's another variation. This is a lock too. So uh, prior to this game and in this game, we had been doing a lot of stack formations to throw a bubble screen, just widening this guy out, trying to force this guy to commit. Are you playing bubble screen? Are you trying to be the seventh defender in the box? Because if you're playing six in the box, we're going to run the ball six for six all day long. If you're going to add to the box and we can go two for two out here, especially with the safety playing off, then we'll throw the bubble screen. If you're going to try to play a seventh guy in the box and get this safety down tighter to be aggressive on the screen, now we're going to throw our lock, which is the one shows his hands and goes vertical, and two is just running the bubble screen from the stack position. So we're just taking advantage of our game plan, stuff that we've shown on film. Now we're going play action. We're pumping that bubble screen. He's just turning around, pumping the bubble screen, show his hands, he's kind of hesitate and then go. And you can see the quarterback because the safety on the bottom of the screen, that safety triggers, that safety triggers the bubble. And so our quarterback knows, hey, we're gonna take a shot right now, throw the ball up over the top. Okay? We get what we want right there. That's our number one read. So it's a great way. So a lot of teams run those kind of lock screens. It's a great way to build in a natural progression. So instead of just taking a shot and it's a one man route, now you can pump, you can look to take that shot. If you don't have it, you have the cross, the backside post, and the check down all working back into a natural progression. So it's a really good way to run those locks. Everybody has those locks in their offense. The other thing we like to do is we like to attach our quick game out concept to it. All right, so if we want to attack that flat um, with a little bit more urgency, uh, we're going to add that quick game out. The only thing that changes is if we tag quick game out opposite the cross, this has to become the MOR. That's a mandatory outside release now. So we have to have some good communication, all right? And I teach my H, hey, dude, if you're running the out, you better tell this joker he's got the MOR because if he doesn't, you might get smacked. All right, so we want some communication. Hey, I'm running out, you got MOR. We need to go grab the outside shoulder of that corner and protect the outfield. 
progression is still the same. 1A, all right, to 1B, 2, 3, danger, right? Here's our danger down here, okay? So nothing changes. Again, we're just changing the high-low opposite across. So bottom of the screen, all right, you start getting that tighter box, that what we call an even stack look. This guy's trying to hang in the box. They're trying to play more of a cover two, all right? We want to go get contact through the outside shoulder and protect this out. If this guy's squeezing in the box, we're going to bang that out all day, right? Just like you guys would throw your out concept against that look all day long. Let me go back and run that slow. Since I didn't run it slow, if it was choppy, I'll run it again. So we got that, we got the out concept, MOR from the one, we got the out from the two, we're running the cross from the top of the screen. I'd like to see my Y, and this is this is later in the game, so this is some guys that don't don't normally get in, but I'd like to see my Y on the top of the screen stem that mic. He gets he gets outside of that sandbacker or the overhang backer, and he gets really wide in, and he's not getting into his window soon enough. Okay, we can tag our sail to it. All right, so we can run our, we run this more as like a, a 10 to 12 back to 10 kind of speed cut out from the H from the slot. So uh, really like this against softer cover three teams. Uh, this past year, our quarterback really liked throwing that sail route. Uh, and I like building in that natural progression. Hey, let's start on the sail. If you don't like it, you've got cross to post to your danger. So this is just that sail concept. Sails on the bottom of the screen, cross is coming from the top. Okay, quarters look, all right, quarters look, they're all bailing, playing soft, trying to bring some pressure. We don't do a good job of picking it up, uh, but our quarterback hangs in and throws a good ball on the money. So you can see we're just changing, again, changing that high-low opposite the crosser. Same look right here, sails on the bottom of the screen. Okay, really widen with the sail, and we're coming backside to the cross, okay, and we drop it. Sail on the bottom of the screen, crosses from the top. Now, this is where I had a coach ask me at a clinic, hey, do you ever tell your quarterback to look at the post? No, because he will automatically. My quarterback, you can see right here, he's never, he's never even looking at the sail. And this is what drives me nuts. If we tag, if we, if we call our Y cross and we tag the sail to it, well, shit, I tagged the sail for a reason. I want you to look at it. And he's thinking, he's thinking home run ball from the very beginning here. You can see his eyes. He never even looks at the sail. Uh, but the sale was good here, which is this is why we called it because we were getting this look to the field. We should have been throwing that sale all day long. All right. But he's trying to take the top off. And, you know, in his in his defense, he throws an awful ball. He hangs it up there. But it's one on one. Our guy goes and makes a play. and It's a touchdown. It's hard. It's hard to MF your guy when they throw a touchdown. I'll, I'll still do it because I'm that kind of guy. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes you have to let your guys be gunslingers and, and do their thing. All right. Now we've got the sale call to the top of the screen. Now, right now, I want to see my guy. If, if he knows he wants to work the sale or the pole, or whatever, if he knows he wants to work the cross and we get this pressure walk up late then he needs to communicate to his running back, keep him in protection, which he doesn't do here. Because, he's, because this kid, this kid, and we, we told him he, he would get horny and he'd come up the line and go, oh, shit, I got something. And, uh, and he kind of lose sight of everything else that's happening on. Because you see, he's not doing a good job recognizing movement from the defense so this guy walks up right now i want to see him slow things down he should be pointing out at this guy let's put my back in protection and i can work my my progression now if you don't do that and that guy comes and we don't pick him up now here's your danger right now okay don't hesitate you, it has to be instinctual that you know where to go with the ball and he gets there a little late he gets there all right um it's not pretty it's not how we want it to get there but he gets there uh and you can see this is wide open, all right? And this kid's a, this kid's a phenomenal athlete. This kid, number seven, is Keely Ringo. You guys, if there's anybody in Georgia, he was the number one corner in the country. And we had an injury, a tailback in the second game. So we, we made him a tailback, and uh, he did things like that. So um, not a natural tailback. He's, he's a damn good corner. He's a 10, 400-meter kid at 6'3", 200 pounds. Um, and, of course, this play came back, and you got you got to coach this. You know, our receiver's coming back. They all want the kill shot, and he leads with his shoulder, blows that guy up, and now it's a 15-yard penalty. And it was a 15-yard penalty for hurdling, so, um, you know. But I wanted to show you that. All right, three by one. We don't run this a ton out of three by one, but we started getting so much post safety. And I don't know how you guys are in the states that, that, that you're playing ball, uh, but out in Arizona, and, and especially with how much success we've had with RPOs, everybody's got to cover guys up. So we're, we went from always getting two high shells to now we're getting so much one high, um, and we're getting cover three and man three. We hadn't seen cover three in, in – 
a long time. And now we're getting a ton of cover three and a ton of man free because everybody wants to cover receivers up. So uh, a very good variation that we started getting to late in the season was running the, the three by one cross. We're going to use our running back as the flat player. So now he's the one B. We can do it with swing post snap, or you'll see in this clip, we're going to fast motion. We call it rock and roll. Rock would be to the right, roll would be to the left. So we're going we're gonna to fast motion the back out. We're going to try to pull this curl flat defender out. We're running our cross. Now we get post safety in this clip that we'll show you, and I'll kind of draw it up. We get post safety, uh, and we get, we get cover three. All we're doing is we're running a little bit. We call it our bait route. We're running a grab route from the two. So he's going to run a six-yard hitch. If we, get, if we get blitz, he's hot, or if we get soft zone, we can bang it to him. If he gets man or he gets matched in zone, he's going to turn that hitch into a five-yard out. He's going to grab him and pull him out. And we're running what we call our sin route outside of that. Our sin route is an is a eight to 10-yard speed cut in. That's why we call it sin. So we push it vertical to eight, we round it out to 10, and flatten it out. And we're just progressing. It's the same progression. 1A, 1B, 2 on the cross, and now it's 3 on the sin. This would be hot against that pressure. All right, and we're going to run out against man. That would be his four. That would be his check down away. All right, typically wouldn't get to that on this. So you can see here's a really nice cut of this. So they're playing cover three. They're matching, right, because that's what everybody wants to do. They want to match your receivers. They want to cover everybody down. They're rolling this curl flat defender weak because we run a lot of, hey, if you're, if, if you're going to play strong and keep an extra guy in the box, we're going to run a lot of curl flat stuff into the boundary. Okay? So they've widened him out a little bit. We're going to fast motion our back. You can see we really expand that curl flat defender. Our Y is running the cross. Under Sam, the mic is gone. We got to flatten this thing out. He leaks this a little bit too vertical. I don't love his route. We really want to force this backer to squeeze that. We're running the grab right here. Six yards, hitch and sit. This guy's on the outside pad, so we're pulling him out right now. We're running five yards out to the sideline, and you'll see that speed in come back inside, and we're just trying to pull this guy out, pull this guy in, and throw that window right back inside of him. Okay? So we'll run this all the way through. Let me put it in slow motion. So we're running the Y cross. We've got that grab bait route. We're grabbing and pulling them out. We're threading that ball back inside. Okay? We still want to progress this the same way. The quarterback should have eyes. Uh, he should have time to get through his progression. All right, read 1A to 1B. In this case, we can come off that pretty quick because we can see the depth of the corner and the width of the curl flat player. Now we're going cross to sin. Okay? Really good job banging that in there. And then, uh, and then what I want to finish with before we get to some questions, I want to show you some variations. So um, this is, uh, this is uh, Clay Helton at USC. And uh, Coach Helton is a hell of a ball coach. And I've gotten a ton of stuff from him over the years. This is kind of like the Steve Sarkeesian system um, that, that, that Coach Helton was a part of. And they do some really good things. But this is, this is what I'm big on, which is I don't like to add a lot of new concepts to my offense. I like to find new and creative ways to dress up the stuff that we know we want to do, the stuff that we know how to progress, the stuff that we know how to teach. We just want to add window dressing. We call it the illusion of complexity. All right. So um, starting in a bunch formation right here, they're motioning their H over to the stack look. They're going to run the lock too. So he's just going to turn around. He's going to show his hands and go. All right. We're getting a Y cross from here. And then when they've got the one tight like this, we call this a deep angle route. He's going to work that spray release outside to the outside shoulder of the corner, and then he's going to win back inside, excuse me, win back inside to that near post. Same exact progression. The play action, this fire is to the same side as the Y, to the same side as your cross, so we're going to progress this the same way. So he's looking 1A to 1B, cross to post. And you want to watch, watch these college guys. Watch, watch the eyes of the quarterback here. You can see him go through this progression all the way. Watch his eyes. 1A, 1B. All right, he's looking. Do I have a shot? Check. Cross, backside post, bang, pull it. Okay, wind post over the top, and uh, that's beautiful. And that's the same exact progression, the same exact play that I was just showing you. It's just being presented a little differently. Okay, same thing right here. This is another bunch look. All right, same look. Motion the H over into the stack. They're going to run the lock to the top of the screen. Lock it, bam, safety expands wide, and they got three over two. Cross to backside post. I don't think their number one did a great job here, uh, but maybe this might have been a called play because you can see how tight the defense is in. Look how, look how free the running back comes. Swing it down to the running back. He's got all day, grass for days. Okay, Beautiful play. Make sure your quarterbacks don't forget about that because that's easy money right there. That's an easy throw, high percentage. There's usually a lot of grass there. Okay, now doing it with some motion. 
20 personnel look, all right? Now all they're gonna do is they're gonna motion their flat player, they're gonna fast motion them out. We call that heaven and hell, heaven to the right, hell to the left. We're taking our H fast motion out of the backfield, all right? They're running WOR right here from the one. And Y is in the, into the boundary. He's running the cross, the number one's running that wind post, backside over the top, and we're getting our flame play action to the same side as the cross. Just dressing it up in a different way, presenting it differently. Okay, 1A, 1B, they get three over two, cross to post. Safety hugs the cross, one-on-one -on, -one on the post, cutting it loose. Okay, home run, big explosive play. And I believe this next one is the last look got for you. This is off of orbit motion. So this is three by one closed. So they're three by one closed into the boundary. Tight ends closed. They're running orbit motion from the one. This is the stuff that's great to do because now you're creating a new number one, all right? Creating a new number two, your flat players coming. He was the, the one to the boundary. Now he's the two to the field. You're getting the defense. And I always talk about this all the time and all the stuff I do. Anytime you can force the 11 players on the other side of the ball to have to communicate and all get each other on the same page in a quick, timely, and, <laughs> and organized fashion, your success rate goes way up. So right here, you create a new number one. You, you use orbit motion to create that slot, uh, that new number two to the field. He's your flat player, and it's the same progression read, all right? You've got the WR right here, 1A. You've got 1B. Here's your Y running the cross, okay? Here's backside post, and now I've got my back on the swing, all right? We're just dressing it up in a new way. We're presenting it differently, okay? Cutting the top, uh, cutting it out, taking the top off with the post, all right? One-on-one -on -one with that corner. All right, so that's, uh, that's all I got. Let me go back to my information page uh, if you guys want to take my information. And uh, I know we've got, we've got some time, so... Um, I want to uh, I want to take as much time as we got to answer questions. Uh, hopefully, I didn't go too fast through that. Um, if I need to pull up some other clips uh, or pull up some clips to go back through, I can do that. So, um, with that said, Coach Vass, I don't know if you want to jump in and, and moderate that, or if I'm supposed to do that. I'll pull up the Q and A. All right, I'm just going to go through the Q and A. So, uh, first question here, Coach: What's your coaching point if the Y is covered on the line of scrimmage? Uh, you've got to work, work release drills, all right? You've got to work releases with that guy. That's what they're going to do. They're going to try to come up and get in his face and get their hands on him. Um, so you got to work releases. And, uh, and if your guy's if your guys a, a puss-puss, you can't get off a press, um, then you need to play him as a wing or you need to flex him out. You need to get him off the line of scrimmage uh, so that he can get himself free. So um, you have to know your personnel. But I think if your kid's the kind of kid that we want to use as an inline tight end, um, he, we just have to teach him how to work releases. Uh, and, and he should be able to get off of that, okay? Um, what are your cues to call uh, play with cross or in the field versus into the boundary? Um, you know what? I like it both ways. A lot of it depends on um, are we getting them to play the, uh, like if it's a 4 2 five team, uh, you know, are they, are they playing their nickel to the field? Um, are, you know, are they playing them the most receivers? Uh, curl flat team, you know, cover three team, are they, are they rolling strong? Are they rolling weak? Um, do we want to pick on a certain linebacker? Maybe it's a 4-3 team and we feel like their will backer is not a great cover guy. Um, a lot of it just depends on kind of game plan. I like to run cross from the, from the field or the boundary. That's, I think that's why it's a great concept because um, you can run it either way. Um, typically, I think if you look at percentages, I probably run it the cross from the field more. Um, but I think if you want to run it from the boundary, um, then I really like using that the out route or the sail route to the field opposite that I think is a good way to do it. Um, so here we go. Since you run the Y cross to both the field and into the boundary, how do you call this play to go left to right? Uh, all we do is call Y Corona. So our kids have to, they have to understand who the Y is. So if we call Y cross, we know the, the Y is running the cross. The guys have to know if they're on the same side as the Y or the opposite of the Y. If they're on the same side, they're running the wind post. If they're on the opposite side, the one runs WOR and the two runs the flat route, whatever it was called. So we, we just tag whoever's running the crosser. The other guys have to, have to pick themselves right off of that. Um, I, I don't know if that seems like it's difficult to do, but I can tell you it's not. Our, our, our kids, you know, our Y, they know who that guy is. And if we don't call Y Corona, if we call H Corona, they know, uh, they know who that guy is. Um, hey, Coach, watching your film and seeing the back is clean and green 90% of the time is an automatic drop off for the quarterback based off the of pre-snap. I, sure, I would like to. I'd like to have a quarterback that was savvy enough to get up there, to take a look at the, at, at the, the, the defensive shell, uh, and or, or see pressure or see whatever and get that thing out right now um, you know for whatever reason you know the high school kids 
Um, they get up there, they get a little nervous, and the game the game goes fast, and and they forget about that. I can tell you, I, I, we really put a big emphasis on that last year of making sure we didn't forget about that back. Um, and uh, I, I would love us to get to that sooner uh, if we recognize that. So that's a great question. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's 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 like stealing if we can get to that. Uh, how much do you run your Y cross per game on an estimate? Um, our Y cross is one of our four, or excuse me, five primary drop back concepts. Uh, we probably call Y cross four or five times a game would be my would be my estimate. Um, you know, there's probably some times where we only call it once or twice. Um, there's probably been times we call it more. Um, but now that we can drive, we can dress it up a lot of different ways. So I think it's a good scheme um, because we can, you know, we can we can. Attack. I might just want to throw out to my slot and I can tag out, but now I've got I've got the cross opposite it. Um, so I have a natural progression for my quarterback. So uh, because of some of the other things that we do, really, it's it's a great uh, thing to run opposite a high low read. So any high low stuff you run, um, it might be like hitch slot fade, and, and you have the cross coming backside. Uh, whatever you like, I think it's uh, it's a it's a very versatile concept that can be called quite a bit. Um, coach, can you go back to the concept before the USC fit film with the three players to the field? Yeah, let me uh, let me scroll to that. Might be uh, might be difficult back on here and I'm trying to just go fast so hopefully I'm not hopefully I'm not talking too fast there it is okay so um, yeah so here's three by one play I'll kind of go through this again so again I'll talk through this three by one cross now we ran white corona we told our guys it was automatic. We call this the bait route. I don't, know if, I don't know if you guys can see my ODK on the top. We call this the bait route. So we told our guys, if we call, if we call Y cross out of three by one, this bait route was automatic. That was our, that was our um, automatic attached route unless we tack something different, okay? The way we used to run three by one cross, our Y would run cross, the, the number two still run, he'd be the one, he'd run that shallow, all right? He'd still run the wind post backside. Uh, and, and we'd run this play action to the Y. The thing that I found is I just didn't feel like we were getting this flap route where it needed to be fast enough to affect this, this curl flat player um, opposite the cross. I just, I just didn't feel like we did it well enough. So um, in this case, we just told our kids three by one, the number one opposite the Y, it's his normal rule. He's running the WOR, okay? We put our back in the flat. Now he's one B, our Y is doing his cross under Sam, he should be stemming the mic, push vertical to 10, flatten it out to 12, and now we've got the bait route. Six-yard hitch. If we get blitz or anything, if he's open, if he's uncovered, he's just going to sit there, and that would be the hot throw. If he's covered, whether it's man or, or he's matched by a zone defender, then we're going to sprint straight out to the sideline at five yards. We want to pull him out. That's called a grab route. We're trying to grab him and pull him out, and then we're running the sin route. So that's our eight-yard speed cut to 10 uh, in-breaking route back behind it. Okay? So we're progressing the same way. 1A to 1B, WR to flat, cross to that sin route. And we do a good job of getting there. Our quarterback, man, this is, this is really good. You can see his eyes. He does a really good job of getting through the progression. So let me slow this down, okay? 1A, 1B, cross, bang, to my bait. Bam, I have the sin route right there. Put it on the money. Okay, really good, really good cut up. Okay, so hopefully that, hopefully that answers that. Let me go back to the uh, – Here, Coach, I got you. I'm sorry. I had to step out for a minute. No, that's all good. Uh, the next question was comes from Erwin Silver. His question is, how much flame fire do you use in the run game? Uh, flame and fire is a pass protection call. So um, fire for us is an automatic. It's a, it's a fake, like we're running stretch to the back to the right. Fire means right, flame means left. And what that tells our offensive line is it's a five-man protection, all right? And, and our back to the right, so the hot's to the right, so that's going to help us identify our mic opposite the back's release. So fire and flame is strictly a pass pro call, uh, but what we do use is our outside zone. So really what that look, it looks like we're running outside zone. That's what we're trying to sell. We're a big outside zone team. Uh, our primary run concepts are inside zone, outside zone, power counter, and because we run a lot of outside zone, we get a really good flow from linebackers off of that fire and flame fake. Okay, the next question comes from Jason Osborne. What are your other four of the five primary drop back passes? We run, our number one concept is four verticals. Uh, and uh, again, I, I don't want a shameless plug, but, but the, that's the stuff that I've been up on my coach two page, four verticals, our outside zone, some of our, ba our base stuff, but we're gonna run four verticals, we're gonna run Y cross, we're gonna run smash, we're gonna run sail, and we're gonna run uh, a curl flat concept. 
and just variations and dressing weapon plays. Um, now we have a couple other one-offs. We we have a you know a man beater mesh concept that we're on, but those five that I just listed, those are our five primary concepts that uh, we kind of feel like we can run and call against whatever we're going to get coverage-wise in a game. Gotcha. Okay, uh, the next question comes from Adam St. Nicholas. Coach, can I see the orbit motion again uh, where it became the new number one on the top of the screen? I think yep. it was USC. I don't know if you already showed yep. that. Sorry to leave you hanging, my man. No, it's all good. I was going. I just, I just pulled up the Q&A and started rolling. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm self-sufficient, Coach. Love it. All right, here we go. So, number one receiver on the top of the screen, he's going into orbit motion. Okay? We call this in our offense, this, this would be triple left. All right? So, this is three by one closed. This would be Z back. So, Z back, it would kind of start selling like he's running, uh, fly sweeping. He's going to orbit, bubble back. And he's going to run that. So, now he becomes 1B. He becomes 1B, 1A is on the WOR right here, working vertical. The Y is running the cross. And now this guy has to know he's the new number one. So he's on the same side as the Y. So he has that win post over the top. So the guys just have to be smart enough to know, hey, I'm the new number one now. All right. So I'm running that win post. I'm on, I'm on the same side as the crosser. Awesome stuff. Uh, the next question is Dan Dundas. Pros and cons of inline Y versus two by two. Pros and cons. Uh, well, I think a lot of it depends on what you're doing. You know, we're an 11 personnel team. And, and again, you know, we, I call this play action Y cross. I'm going to do this on a play action look. So if you're, if you're attacking Sorry, a coach, tight end, your audio cut out. You said you're going to do it out of what now? So, so, so I'm just, uh, I'm just answering, you know, uh, why, why would we do it from a tight end attached versus a tight end split out? I think a lot of it depends on how are you running the ball in that game? Uh, because this is a play action concept for us. So if, if we're getting in, in two by two close with an inline tight end and we're running one back power, running outside zone um, with that tight end attached, then this is a play action look off of that. We're, we're, we're kind of showing run fake towards the Y and releasing him, okay? Now, if you're not running the ball with a tight end attached, then it probably doesn't do you any good to all of a sudden now attach him and try to run wide cross him play action so I think however you're running the ball um that's how from a two by two look that's how you want to set this play up uh Brian she says how many tempos does your philosophy have um okay so our base tempo we call yellow light and what yellow light means and and we don't even say yellow light we just that's what we're in unless we say something different, okay what yellow light is for us is it's no huddle uh our x and z flip flop sides so our our z goes to the strength so our, our Y and our Z always go to the strength. Our X goes weak. And that's the way we isolate. Our X is that we're going to put our best receiver at X, all right? And so if we're going to put three receivers to the field, I want my X to be the single guy to the boundary opposite that. I want to force the defense to have to make a decision. If they can play him one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to play soft off of him. We're going to throw uh, gift routes to him all day long. If they, if they press him and play man, we're going, to, we're going to freaking push the ball downfield. And if they bracket him, now we're gaining numbers in the box or numbers on the perimeter to the field. So that's kind of the philosophy there. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, that, and, and coach, say the question again, I kind of got sidetracked. Uh, let me pull it up. It was, um, oh, tempos. What are your, what are your oh, tempos, tempos? Yeah. So, so that's our base tempo. So X and Z flip flop. All right. Um, our green tempo is where we want to go faster. So green tempo. Now our X stays on the left and our Z stays on the right. Okay. And we're still no huddle. We're trying to get up, but we're still, we're still signaling our plays in as normal. All right. From the green tempo package, we have a NASCAR package, which is our one word play calls, all right? So one word set the formation, play, the protection, the RPO, whatever it is, one word set the call, all right? From the green tempo, we have our fire package, which is one word sets the formation and RPO, and then the second part of the call would set the run game. So I got that from Coach Beck in Texas. It's a way to not have to be, you can still play fast, you can, you can slim down your terminology, uh, but you're not locked into one run call um, with the RPO. You, you can kind of dress up the run however you want it to. Um, we do a sugar huddle uh, where kind of the Auburn sugar huddle, where we, we get up and we're three yards off the ball. We get into a huddle. Uh, we, we're, not, we're not trying to go fast, but we break the huddle fast. We get up on the ball and we, and we run the play fast. So that's, a, that's another change up. And then we have red tempo, and red tempo is our four-minute offense. That's huddle up, take our time, let the clock get down to five seconds, and, uh, and try to lead the clock. Those, those are our, our three tempos. Yellow is our base. Uh, green is our, is our faster tempo. We have a couple different variations in green. And then red would be our four-minute offense. 
Uh, what, what's your quick game package real quick, Coach? What quick game? Uh, you know, obviously, you know, most of our, just like everybody else, most of our quick games built into our RPO. Now, I, I think the quick game that we're still running exclusively as quick game um, is our out concept. Uh, and then we run a, we run a three man stick and a three man snag concept that, that, uh, you know, has kind of evolved into one concept and we just tag whoever that stick player is. Um, it could come from the, the two, the three or the one. Um, and so those are our primary quick games. Everything else is going to be, um, kind of built around our RPO package. Okay. Uh, Adam St. Nicholas, uh, says, Coach, do you have any conversions out of the four verts? I guess it's on your, all your coach tube stuff, right? Yeah, I've got a ton of conversions out of four verts. That, that's a whole other clinic. So, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not, I'm not here to try to sell anybody anything, uh, but I, 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 put a, I put everything we do for four verts, how we tag it, how we dress it up and switch verticals and, and everything like that, I, I put a bunch on there. So um, if that's something you're interested in, um, check that out or, or shoot me an email. We can talk a little bit more. Um, we can get on the phone or something. Here's an interesting one. This will be the last one I'll take. Coaches, any tips on calling a game from the field rather than the box? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've tried to call a game from the box one time, and I hated it. Um, so I think a lot of it just comes down to kind of how you're wired. Um, you know, some guys are very uh, analytical, and they kind of need to step back and ha have their script laid out in front of them and slow things down, and that kind of helps them process. Um, you know, I think I've been running this variation of the offense that we run now um, for 12 years. And so much like, a, you know, a wing T guy that kind of has their series and how they want to attack. I, I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of, of what we're trying to do in our offense, how we're trying to attack a defense, how we adjust to different things that defenses are doing. So I like calling it from the field, um, especially because I'm the head coach and offensive coordinator. So I've got to manage the game as well. Um, I, I think it's important that um, – you got a guy up in the in the booth that you trust, uh, but I will say now that we have the the sideline replay, and I think most state associations can use that. Um, the the importance of having a really really good guy in the in the booth isn't quite as big as it used to be, uh, because now I can come in you know in between each series and, and pull up my iPad and really see what they're doing, and then kind of formulate how do I want to attack and how do I want to adjust based on what I'm seeing from them. All right, Coach. Well, I appreciate your time.